Let's sit down. We will not be taking our time this morning. Let's just wave, wave to one another so we don't waste time. Let's look up and we are waving to each other. We love you. I love everyone. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. This is going to be just like our family forum. We're just going to be discussing few issues. And the issue is, it's very, you know, when Rabimbo was talking about this this morning, I was thinking, no, I, I know that I didn't discuss this with anybody. Um, and what we are going to deliberate on is making it to heaven. Just like, you know, most of us, especially, especially our youth and our children, they don't even know the importance. They, they know that we are born again. Yes, it's important to be born again. And their parents are always telling them that it's important to be born again. But they don't know why heaven is crucial. They don't know why heaven must be. Making it to heaven is very, very, very important. Let's open our Bibles to the book of John chapter 3. John chapter 3. My iPad needs to be needs to be laid on me, so it's gonna be <laughs> taking me some few time <laughs> to to for you to come. So please bear with me. John chapter three, and we'll be looking at verses one to eight. The Bible says in verse one, starting, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, Master, we know that you are, a teacher come, you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Mm. Verse 3 says, Jesus now answered him and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is heaven. Even though the Bible says there will be a new earth and a new heaven. The Bible says nobody can see that kingdom unless someone that has given their life to Christ. Verse 4 says, Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus Jesus answered, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I say to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes. And you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. The most important thing about heaven and people that are going to heaven, there is no mistake in going to heaven. No, there is no mistake that, ah, maybe, uh, uh, one thing I know can happen is that someone is not born again and they are like on hospital bed, Somebody may go there, the person is dying tomorrow. Somebody will go there today and lead the person to Christ. And the person will just make heaven. Mm -hmm. That is perfect. But what about myself and yourself that has been in the kingdom? Some of us, as we are seated here, can be counting 20, two, two decades that they have given their life to God. Probably somebody will even count three decades. Some people gave their life to God when they were even in secondary school. Some of us are seated here. Not me though, but at least some people, how come such a person will not make heaven? God forbid. God forbid. Making it to heaven, the first thing is that we must be born again. And during the Sunday school, it has been, it, we have been, that has been explained to us what it means to be born again. I know there are teachings nowadays the teachings have said that once you are born again, you are born. You are born again. It doesn't matter. That is the lie of the devil. If that is it, then nobody will be going to hellfire because everybody will just be coming and say, I've given my life to God. And that's, they will go back to their vomits.
The first thing is that we must be, and I, I thank God that we saw it this morning in the, in, the, in the Sunday school, that we must be genuinely. It is not a social gathering. It is not a social thing. It is not like Ashoy B when people say, have you not bought the Ashoy B? No. Being born again is having a personal relationship with God. It's giving up the world totally. Not envying the world. Giving everything up for Christ. Walking in God perpetually. And the next step is now repentance. Repentance. How do we repent to God? Do you remember ever when you want to repent? How do you do it? Heaven is eternal. Mm. What we are enjoying on earth, the mansion we are enjoying on earth, everything that we are enjoying on night, how do we believe that it's temporal? It's not forever. So why can't we build where we are going forever? There is a place that is eternal that we are going forever. We are going to be there forever. The Bible recorded our body will be changed. So we won't have a body that will say, ah, this is what we are. No, but there won't be somebody abusing you anymore. There will be a place. How, how will it be nice for this old church now to find ourselves in heaven? Amen. Everybody, all our children, grandchildren, everybody, our wives, our husband, and we look at ourselves and say, ah, Isaac, you make it. You made it to heaven. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. I made it as well. I say, have you seen, brother? Has, have you seen? Ah, we all, because the Bible says something that we will get to heaven. He said we will recognize one another. Even though our body has changed, but we are going to look at it and say, eh, Tito B. So you are here. I don't know. The Bible did not tell us that we are allowed to hug. But I would have thought that, ah, come, come, let me hug you. Ah, you made this. Congratulations to everyone. And we are asking, oh, I saw her. I saw her. I saw him there. Oh, I saw her as well. We all made it to heaven. The Bible says, after we have done all this, brethren, I beg of you, after we have done all this, that we will not become a castaway. Yeah. Don't forget something. Grace is, 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 grace is for everybody. You may see somebody, uh, somebody I had a story. Somebody said um, they were doing service. The, the, the church was doing service. I don't know what church. I don't know, I don't think it's regime. They were doing a service one day, a night vigil, and they were singing, they were, ah, and they said opposite to them was a pub, big pub. People were dying and drinking, drinking, or drinking alcohol there. They said this particular man, just not when he came out, he came out of a pub, stood by with, her, with his back, drunk, heavily drunk, his back at the door of the church. And as soon as some, I don't know what happened, he just fell into the church like that. He just flinged open and he fell on the floor. And he said, the preaching, the preacher that was preaching said, no, 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 just leave him, it's okay. And they said, as they, they were preaching, he was doing, you know, somebody that was drunk. He was doing, ah, he was just doing his own thing. And he said, after the man has finished and everything, he was still screaming there, the man came, just prayed for him, and they left him like that. They, they said, the, the man said, I'm telling you today, one day he went back to the church to preach. He was one of the ushers, the, the, the English man. He said, the gift of God is without repentance. This man from the pub that same night was one of the ushers in the church. He said, oh, you don't remember this man? He said, no, I don't. He said, the man that fell from that day, that, the man that was drunk that day, he, he said the man was laughing. He said, this year now, when he went to the church, so I, he didn't know what happened after three years. He's now the pastor of the church. This same man that we all remember, they, they saw the other day that he fell from the pub into the church. God has got a plan for every one of us. Amen. And the plan of God for our lives will never elude you. Amen. But what I'm telling you is that for some people, the way it will work for them to get forever, it may be different with me and you. We all remember how that uh, Baba Akidelmi got the grace, had the grace to come back. Not everybody will have that grace. Not everyone. I want 
want us to look at the first thing to get to heaven is are we born again? It's a personal thing. Your husband cannot answer that question. You cannot answer for your, for your son. You cannot answer for your child. Are you born again? Look at it. There's no criteria to being born again. You don't have to pay to be born again. You don't have to do anything. Just accept Christ in your heart. Repent of your sins. What are those things? What are those things that make me to, that I know that God doesn't like? What are those things? And don't forget, we all do so many things that God does, he doesn't like at all. If you know what I'm talking about. But it's not about it, but when you have done it, how do you feel about it? There are some things you should do and you should not have peace doing. You should have done it, yeah, I have done it, but ah, the peace of God is done, it's just troubling your heart. That ah, what you have done, just only for you to go on your knees and say, God, please forgive me, have mercy on me. One of my mentors said to me one day, he said, the only thing you eat and can never finish is the grace of God. And I'm telling us today, I was listening to this, I don't know, I would have listened to that message more than 30 times now. When you was talking about falling from grace, and I was looking at the verse, I look at, he said, no, 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 people, you don't understand what I'm saying. He said, I'm not talking about you leaving God, falling from grace. I'm not talking about you not coming to church anymore. He said, that is your decision. That has got nothing to do with anybody. If you don't want to come to church, he said, that's not what I'm saying. He said, what he's saying is that God himself dropping you. That I've had enough. I've called you several times. What is it now? And now I'm dropping you. Bam. That scared me. That God can... Now I went to the book. I said, I want to see where God can drop somebody. Let's open to the book of Revelation chapter 3. Because may God give us understanding of the word of God. So, I don't know. I just need somebody to go and lay hands on my iPad. I think it, it needs a bigger anointing. That's all my iPad needs. I don't know. Please, Revelation 3. I don't know if it's 16 to 18 or something. I don't know. It's not in my book. You are going to read. Yes. Did you he say I will vomit you out of my mouth? Yeah. Yes, sir, I don't mind. Okay. Or you can read, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Yes. The Bible says in the book of Revelation 3, 16 to 18 says, So then, because you are lukewarm, you refuse to be who you are meant to be, even though you are a Christian. The Bible says, and you are neither cold nor hot. When you get anywhere, the unbelievers are doing their own thing. You blend so well with them. When you get to church, you can blend as well. The Bible says, I will spill you. Another version says, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Jesus said, this is what I'm saying. God dropping you. I have had enough. People have been calling you. What is it? What is it that in the world that we are pulling, we are, we are pulling, we are, that is not, that cannot finish? Who is it that is taking God's time in your life? That is taking God away from you? The Bible says that I will spill, I will vomit you. This is what Gio was telling you, that God can drop somebody. I didn't have understanding. We have read in this church this verse more than 10 times. But I've never thought it could mean God dropping somebody after falling from grace. Nobody is this church before from grace. Amen. But in all the prayer I've always been saying that God, please go to, go to our hearts in this church. Make our hearts to love you. Yeah. Everybody must make it to heaven. Everybody must understand. All your friends around you must make it to heaven. I remember the, the time I first joined Redeem. They would say, yeah. Even if you are not taking your friends to heaven, just take your family, you, your wife, and your children. It's, 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 it's more than enough. Please, please, it's a personal question. Let's ask ourselves when we get home. Have a time. Please ask God, am I still in you? When the trumpet sound, will I even hear and, and go with you? The Bible says, I will spill thee out of my mouth. 
We have seen that you have to be born again. We have seen that you have to repent. And the other one is that you have to accept our Lord Jesus Christ. No matter how much on, on an unbeliever we do it and be so good. This morning they were talking in the church about being good and being perfect. They will see, you, know, you, you have seen some unbelievers. They are unbelievers, but they are good people. Who, how many people have seen those people? Yeah. Oh, they are, in fact, their marriage as a man is better than a believer. Every, in every way. They're so, they have gentle spirits. Everything is perfect. But once they don't have Christ, the Bible told us they cannot make heaven. That is what the Bible says. It's about accepting God. How many of us that accepted God two decades ago, we, see, we are still holding to the same God? Or we have dropped God along the way? Situations of life, they will expire. No situation we are going through will be permanent. What is it? Thank God for our mother that, that just passed a drive. Is, is, nobody wants to know how long she's been driving for. You understand what I'm saying? There are some, there are some stages in life that we pass through. They are just going to come and go. They, are, they can't be permanent. Now I'm sure she can take me to Morocco yes. driving. <laughs> Abima, I don't have to buy yes. tickets. No, 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 I don't need to buy my tickets anymore. And that is it. How many of our children back in Nigeria at the age of 13 can drive? Someone, so a friend of mine said she started driving at 14 in Nigeria. No law, nothing. You just do what you want. Because the leader, our leaders are doing what they want as well. God will help us. Mm -hmm. Sama is most important that we should get to heaven. Uh, let me start from somebody who has um, my PA. Can I have a microphone, please? You know when you have PA, you don't have PA who can ask you questions. My own PA, when you tell her to stand, she stands. When you tell her to sit, she doesn't ask you why. Not like the people in my house. That they will ask you, why are we doing? No, just tell to me, do this. And she's doing it straight. Ah, unless she doesn't understand it. If she doesn't understand, she will ask you, she doesn't understand. If you ask people in my house, go and bring my phone, they will ask you three questions. Why should you, what do you want to use it for? Can't you do without it? They will ask you those ones. Please bring this one. If we have to do it line by line, what do you understand? The concepts of every man. What do you, what do you understand about? going to heaven and what are your perspectives about it? What do you think about it? Well, I think as a last resting place. It is. It is. It is, ma. So what do you think, ma, about, okay, it is our last resting place, but what do you, do you think it's going to be difficult for people to get to heaven? Do you think we are going to do so much and so much to, what do you think we need to do to get to heaven? Well, the Bible has already let us know that getting there is, is a narrow road, yeah. and we need to work hard. So it's the working hard, and we need the grace and the mercy of God. Mm -hmm. Because as we're saying this morning, there are some things that we want to do spiritually, but we're fighting with the, with the flesh. So I would just say we need the grace of God to help us, you know, drop the flesh and walk more in the spirit. Amen. For us to be able the Lord to will help us in the name of Jesus. Let's have it for Brother Mayamiko. We have heard, Mayamiko, we have heard that uh, heaven is our resting place. What do you think about heaven? Do you think it is possible for us to get there? Or do you think it's, hard, it's going to be hard? Um, well, um, depending on like whereabouts you are. Because uh, say if like, you live in an environment where people are sinning everywhere, doing bad things, bad things here. Yeah. I think uh, um, it can be quite hard mm. for mm. To, to make heaven. But if, say, if like, you live in an environment where there's Christians everywhere, everyone is always pleasing God, always doing the right thing, things, and then it can be easy. God bless you. Wrong association. Show me your friend. Who are your friends? What do people know you to be at work? Do people know that you are just you are just you? Or do people know at work that hmm, no, there are things they can't say when you are there? Or people just they can just say anything, it doesn't matter. Oh, yeah, we know she's a Christian, but she's okay with what we are doing. 
Oh, she's okay with it. Sister Radu, what do you think about heaven? Are, or are you, are you even looking up to heaven? As a, because when I was growing up as a Christian, I wasn't, I knew that I was a Christian. I want to do well, though I wasn't doing good, but I want to just like our mother said it, that uh, we should drop the flesh. I didn't drop, drop the flesh. I was just doing my own thing. But I never in one day had the plan for heaven. No, it wasn't in my thoughts. Yes, ma. So, sorry, your question was, what am I? What are your plans towards getting to heaven? How do you, what have you put in place? Uh, for starters, I think all of us should as, as ask Christian, ourselves. Ask ourselves, search ourselves every day. And overall, mercy, if we have to speak of, is mm. over judgment for me personally, and many, most Christians, because like we're talking about perfection. I, I personally think it's not an easy thing to achieve, achieve perfection as a human being. So to make heaven, first I will ask God just to keep my name in the book of life. Mm -hmm. What am I doing to keep my name there is just like checking myself every day, mm. work in progress, trying to improve on everything I do positively and how I impact on lives around mm. me and what I do as my, as in my home and all of that. But overall, I'm going to ask for mercy to speak. Amen. 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 In the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Please give to the next person. What do you think? Don't worry about your daddy. Don't worry. What do you think, sir, can stop people from getting to heaven? Or is it that once we have given our life to God, it's okay. It's okay. We go to heaven anyway. What are the things that you think can can stop us? Can be an obstacle to our getting to heaven, sir? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I think that um, what can stop us from getting to heaven is ourselves. Mm -hmm. We have to make a choice. And okay, look, in order to get to heaven, I have to be do what is right in the sight of God 24 7. Mm -hmm. And that basically means working out our salvation. Because the Bible says something is clear it says, work out your own salvation with fear yeah, and trembling. I think if we work out our salvation with fear and trembling, we should be fine. If we don't do that, we'll be in trouble. Mm -hmm. So ourselves, we can, we can walk yeah. towards it. We, we can stop ourselves. God bless you, sir. But I want, I know that, ah, I mean, if I decide to live in the world today, if I decide to leave some few things, I know that, but what are those things you think personally that, ah, if I do this, what are those things? Just give us one thing that, if you, you know that if you do this, ah, uh, no way, no way. What mm -hmm. do you do? And you are always abstaining from such a thing. You dread it so much. Okay, I think I think uh, somebody gave an illustration of the sin of lucre. Mm -hmm. The sin of lucre is the biggest culprit of sin. The loss of the eyes. Yes. So. Um, the loss of the eyes, the pride of life, and the was the last one. What's the last one? The loss of the flesh. Loss of the flesh. Okay. I think at any point in time, um, for example, I mean, like I think Mark was saying something about um, about living. I remember you living actually. I think if you live in certain environments, you have to make a choice to either look without sinning, because let's be honest, they are all around us. So at that point in time, you have to make a choice. Mm. And look, sorry, I ain't doing this. Mm. Okay, in my own example, in my own, in my own, in my own case, actually, yeah, okay. Um, when I see a lady, okay, dressed in a property or something, because sometimes you, you, they just appear for you, and what do you do? Mm. At that point, I just make a choice. Look, that is somebody's wife. Don't look. Just think of something just else. Take, just go your own way. Just go your own way. Just do your own thing. You understand? I mean, so that's the constant choice and decision I made myself actually. And I always kind of uh, caution myself if you look, when you're out there, look, but don't even have any, just don't bother. Just do your own thing. Just do your own thing. Because let's be honest, like he was saying, they are all there. I mean, what do you do? I mean, that's why I pray for their generation that what they will face, that God will help them. Amen. Praise if he has not come, amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Sir, what are the things that we can do 
to abstain from all those things. We have seen one of those things that he has told us is sin can get us to hellfire. And nobody is going to hellfire in this church. Amen. What do you think? What are those things, sir, that you think that we can do to abstain from all evil appearances? Because that's what the Bible says to us in the book of First Thessalonians chapter 5. It says that we should abstain from all evil appearances, from sin. How can we do that? I mean, looking at a woman who is, you didn't ask the woman to dress like that, to open up all her chest out. It was her choice to do that. But, but once you see it, what, are you, what, what can we do? You see, God has given us um, his conditions for going to heaven. And those conditions are the first things we should first of all meet or met before we even think about. Because it's not our because you look at a woman and remove your eye that can make you not to go to heaven or, uh, or to go to heaven. Mm. First of all, that make sure you first of all you should know in your life that you are born again. You've been born again. Make sure that that one is clear. And that thing is that you must do what God commands, such like you must be an evangelist. Mm. You must go out there. You may do whatever good you think, what you think that is good. But if you have never met the God's requirements, mm. whatever you are doing is in flesh. Because all of us, do, uh, we do all those things. You can say, I can look at the woman and say, come on, uh, if I see this one now, uh, what am I going to do? I may see 10 or 15 of them before I get through. Mm. So what am I looking? What mm. am I going to gain from those things? But, uh, it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't mean that, I mean, it's not that that will take me to heaven or to anything. But first of all, know God. Mm. Know his commandments. Mm. Know what his requirements are first before you do any external thing. First of all, do he said we should go out there and make disciples of uh, uh, Christ. So if we do not, if we have not done all those things, where are you starting from? Mm. So how can you think that whatever you have done can take you to heaven? You see. Mm. So to go to heaven is first of all, look at the God's requirements, meet them first, and then, and discipline your body. Mm. <laughs> that there are some certain things you cannot do or say. You see? All those things will be, because if you think where we are going is in Tana, look at how many years we are we're going to stay, even if you stay 120 years mm. here, which is document, it does not compare once one bit of uh, internal life. That's so cool. the only thing you have to do is to say, I must make this heaven. Amen. What does it require? That you follow it. It's not, it's not going to be easy. It was not even easy for Jesus Christ, hmm. who, is a, who came as a God. Because if it was easy for him, he would have requested God to take that cup away from him. You see, because flesh has come in. So for us all, we need to, first of all, do what God said, and then discipline our, because other ones, God will give us the grace. Amen. That is when we require the grace. You see, God will give us the grace to continue to see it. Amen. Thank you very much, sir. Let's open our Bibles to the book of um, Exodus chapter 20. Please, um, Tito, can you give it, can you take the... Um, Think to the next person, please. Let's open to the book of Exodus chapter 20, verse from verse 1. The Bible says, And God spoke all these words himself, saying, He spoke all these words. Himself is not there. I just I just put so please. So I'm just saying, like emphasizing. That's why the himself, I put the himself there. It's not in the Bible. And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. And I will liken this. So God bring you out of the land of Egypt when we were in the world, when we were in afflictions and calamities. He gave us himself. Now verse, four say, the verse 3 says, you shall have no other gods 
before me. No other God. No, we're going to be looking at the fathers. How, how possible now? Our only God is, is Jesus. Our, but we can have other gods. Not even those idols they were worshipping in those days. Whatever takes the time and the place of God in our lives can be likened to that our God. Whatever that we can afford to do when we are meant to be in the presence of God, even in our house and on our knees, what are those things that take the place of God from us? What are those things that we would prefer to do than to do any other thing? What are those things? The Bible says in verse 4, you shall not make for yourself a calved image. And people will just say, oh, but <laughs> is it not in those days they make, they make those calved images? We don't make them anymore. We will be surprised. He said, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth, you shall not bow down to them nor serve them. Somebody was telling me, I can't even remember this story. I had very long time ago that somebody bought something like, you know when you go to the market and you just find like something like something they carved already, like they put in the house, any, any images, it could be, I'm, I'm sure that person didn't, didn't buy any image of another thing. It would have been something image that should be in a Christian home. And this person said they suffered in their house for years and years and years. He said they suffered so much. I don't know one day, maybe a woman of God, a man of God just came to their house and they were praying and said, how long have you had this thing for? And they said, ah, they like it, it's been there for years. He said, can you please remove it? Can you just remove this thing? And he said, take it away, far away, and go and throw it away from this house. He said the woman conceived that same month. That was the same month the woman conceived. Nothing will take the place of God in our lives in the mm -hmm. mighty name of Jesus. Verse 7 says, Oh, sorry. Verse 6 says, But show ye mercy to thousands, to those who love me and keep my commandments. Verse 7 says, You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. You know, even at work, you see all the English people, they will call the name of God as uh, uh, Jesus me. Or, you know, when you just want to tell somebody some, something, whether it's true or it's not true, we, we make them, we want them to believe us. And we say, ah, God. No, God. As well as the Yorubas, we are so much into it. We just said that, I, I was going to convince Rabbi, but that's what I was trying to tell him is true. But it is now the name of God we put in it, which will be the name to convince him to say, no. Let your, the Bible says, let your truth be truth. Let your yes be yes. Yes, your no be no. Whoever you tell that this is what I'm telling you, and the person cannot believe you, that, that should be that person's problem. The, the Bible says, You shall not take the name of the Lord God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. The name of God is sacred. The Bible says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work. You, you your, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your castle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. For, for in six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them and rested the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the, the, the Sabbath day and he hallowed it. There's a covenant on the seventh day which we have designed. It's a design of men to say, okay, today is Sunday and that is the day we are taking as our seventh day. That is the day we are going to be serving and worshipping God. Mm -hmm. How comfortable do you feel the day you are supposed to be in the presence of God? And you just decide to say, this is our own day or our own time. To be honest with you, I woke up this morning because I did almost 11 hours driving yesterday. And I'm telling you, I woke up this morning. I didn't even go to bed. I didn't even, I didn't even go to bed. I don't know. I can't remember. Maybe around 3 o'clock. And I was thinking this morning that it's a no-go area for me to say I'm not coming to church anyway. I'm alive. 
and I can still walk. But the way I felt in my body, the Sabbath, the Sabbath day is for God. In this part of country, some people, they, they have to work on Sunday, if you know what I mean. Some people, they have their rota to work on Sundays. They have to work. There's nothing we can do about it. They can't tell their employer that they're not coming to work. They have to work. But what about myself and you that we are not working? I will see myself on a Sunday coming to church. After church, I will see myself doing visitations, my plans. I will see myself now going into the community to speak to people. Probably after family, family evening, you come out six, seven o'clock to talk to as many people that you can find on the way and just talk to them one or two, three, to say, ah, Jesus loves you, and this is it, this is what it is. You, you never know. All we are doing is just we are planting the seed. As you have told somebody today that Jesus loves you, and this is this about Jesus, he will just say, what are you talking about? We will then one day, another person, it could be about two, two weeks, another person, God will send another person to the same person to go and speak about Jesus. Is that the... I'm drinking the glass, the boiler. Well, it's not our own. It is ours. The Bible says in verse 12, Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God is giving you. Honor your father, honor your mother. The Bible says you shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. What do we see this place about? Adultery is even, to some people, is just a normal thing. Normal, normal life living. Gio said, a, a, a woman said to a particular general overseer, I don't know of what church, I said, this thing I'm doing with you, when I was doing it, when I was in the world, I didn't feel bad about it. Because I'm in the church now, because the, the, the lady is in the choir, because I'm doing it with you, I feel so dirty. And the man now said to him that, oh, you don't understand, there is a particular uh, level of grace that he is operating from. What level of grace? Practicing adultery, what has that got to do with level of grace? My prayer is that there's nobody in this church that is, a, that is, that is practicing such. In the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says, you shall not steal. You shall not be a false witness against your neighbor. And I'm thinking that, I don't know how this particular verse will work in Nigeria. <laughs> you shall not be a false witness because all of them are false witnesses. Ah, did you see it what happened? Yes, they saw it. And they didn't say anything. The Bible says you shall not covet your, your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male servants, nor his female servants nor his ox, nor his donkey, nor anything that is your neighbor's. Don't covet. The only thing God allows us to covet, who can tell me? There's something that God allows us to covet. We are free to covet that thing. It's the, it's the ministry. If you look and say, I'd like to be a pastor, or I'd like to go and plant a church, God covets it. God likes you to do that. But not your neighbor's wife. G was telling us that one of the uh, pastors ran away with his with his son's wife. And they, from, uh, he said to us, that, please. He said that um, the demons in Africa, when they, when they hear that, that uh, they will say, ah, that is another level for them. The demons in London, they have graduated, taking their, somebody taking his son's wife. And they ran away. I'm thinking, what is happening in the kingdom of God? That's even the people in the world don't do that. Please, ma, I want us to, to emphasize what are the advice that you can give to us about I mean meeting us for the first time. You have the microphone though. What are you going to advise somebody that you are meeting for the first time? You are going to speak because it's, it's all about heaven. What are you going to advise someone about? Somebody who doesn't even know Christ at all. What are you going to advise them? 
What are you going to tell them about heaven that will not make their hearts to jump? Because my, my, one of my daughters have not slept since Rabbi was said to them that God. <laughs> and there are some things we say in the church that are actually key into our lives. She said she has been thinking since Friday when Rabbi was said to, to us in the church that God diverts some arrows that she will see herself and say, so when I sleep, so there are some things actually like it's supposed to harm me and God has really helped me to divert it somewhere. So some, somebody like that, she will never, I'm, I'm sure she will never forget that God is a good God and the, God can divert arrows and remove it our way. What are you going to tell someone who doesn't even, because just as in one of us, we are sitting there, for me, I'm a, I'm a basic person, scratcher from the scratch. What are you going to advise me? My about heaven. Heaven is God's ultimate will for all of us, um, basic. And um, to get there, we must make up our minds with his help that we will do what he wants us to, to do, do. And that is to say his will in all things, in everything, even when those things are challenging. Uh, even when it is issues of life or whatever it is, but then how do we even get to do his, to do those things? It's completely relying on him per second, per second, moment by moment mm. for help. That we must be, to make heaven, we must know that it's, yes, it's by grace, but we're in need of God. Without God, we can't make heaven. Without his help. So, yeah, we, we cannot make heaven by doing our own thing. We have to do God's thing. And he's the one who will keep guiding us, uh, uh, you know, about the yardstick of what that his thing is. And God's thing is God's standard. God's standard is God's will. Yeah, if we're hot, what, did, what does God want us to do about it? If, there's a, if somebody commits adultery or steals from us or lies, or even if we're faced with temptation, you know, so it's a, we have to take personal responsibility for, for it, for doing it. it like we you, you know, you've clearly explained that it's been explained before now. Nobody can take that responsibility for us, no matter mm. how they love us. One, we're the one that will determine we will make it. Mm -hmm. And to make it, we must determine that it is me. There's no excuses. It's my husband, it's my teacher, it's my child, it's um, the minister. There's no excuse. Even if it is there, what did God want me to do about what they did? Mm -hmm. yeah, because many of us, may God, God would help us in, uh, as we, 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 we declare and pray mm -hmm. as a family in God that we will not miss it. Amen. But a lot of us will miss it because of people ah. and because of what they did or did not do. Amen. So it's personal. It's between us and God now. Jesus came to a stage in his life. He had to do what God wanted him to do or do his own thing. So may God help us, Amen. even when it's hard. And one story that really I would never forget, I don't remember, we talked about it yesterday, is the story of um, Lot's wife. I heard that she's still there as a pillar of salt. I don't know if it's true in, in Israel. So it would be nice to know when God makes a way to go and see through that eyes. But that story, I will never forget it. I always remember. Why did she turn to a pillar of salt? Because she refused she to do basic instruction, do not look back. So that's how it is with making heaven. We're on a journey as born again. Our heart, our eye, everything must be on God. Mm. Even when the issues are there, is your heart on God and what is he saying? Even when we're crying through the tears, he can help us to do what he wants us to do. May he help us. Amen. Yeah, Thank you very much, Ma. I like the bit, um, the, the, we must be determined. Nobody will help us to do it. We must be determined in our hearts. Let's finish this. Let's finish them first. Please. Thank you. We must be determined in our hearts that come rain, come sunshine, we will make it to heaven. You know the verse that I really like about it is when a man's ways pleases the Lord. I think our our muscle should be we should we must be determined. 
and make our ways to please the Lord all the time. We cannot please everyone. We cannot. We cannot compare ourselves. You know, sometimes you find people even comparing themselves, not even with people you can see, with people on Instagram. They, they compare themselves with people on the Instagram. They want to match up with people that are on Instagram. When God has created you to match and you are suitable for, for God's purpose, the Bible says we are fearfully and we are wonderfully made. A, a man of God was asking, there's nobody on earth that God has created that is ugly. The man of God said, what is the yardstick? Where is the measurement you are measuring beauty? He said that God created everything and he said he looks back. And he said, what did he say? He said, everything is good. He didn't say some people are ugly. He created them unfit for purpose. He didn't say that. He has created you for what he wants you for. You are, you are more than enough for what God has created you to be. Please, let's give it to Chijera. I'm sure you have, you have heard so much about Evan. And as a child, 11, you are looking up to, to God to take you to Evan. What are you doing about it? Or do you even believe it? Do you believe we are going to heaven? You believe it? Yes, darling. So what are you doing as a child? I realize you're a child, don't get me wrong. Do you think you, the responsibility should be on your parents to help you to get to heaven? Or do you think you have to do anything as an 11 year old to, to make heaven? Good. Because um, it, our parents' responsibility to guide us in the way of there is a God and there is heaven. And then when you start to personally believe that there is a God and there is heaven, um, it then becomes your own personal responsibility. No exactly. How old you are, it, beco it becomes your own responsibility. Step two, to go there. Amen. Thank you very much. Isaac, what do you think about heaven? What do you think is there for us? What do you think? Um, I think there's... Or you don't you, you don't like understand the, I know you you know you've had everyone as many times as possible. What do you think? You're not sure. Don't worry, I'll come back to you. It's on me. Let's go to Philip. Let's hear from him. If he's even preparing at all, if he's looking forward to heaven. How does he do it? By listening to the music he listens to, or maybe there's another way. So how are you preparing to get to heaven? Through the music you are listening, or is there any other way we don't know? Temptation like? But I think everyone has their own temptation. Some people bet, some, like some people gamble, some people um, steal. I think everyone has their own temptation that they need to deal with if they're going to make it to heaven. And I think so, to deal with that, you need to, have a, you need to establish a good connection with God. Because without God, you can't stop any temptation that you have. You can't just wake up and say, I'm going to stop smoking. Like, it's God that's going to make you stop smoking. Amen. Thank you very much. Let's not forget about being determined. Let's be determined. Because some things, just like Mr. Addison told us, some things will not come easily. Some things will not come to us unless we stand up and say, God, I want to make it to heaven. And just like I said to us, it is a personal thing. It is something that
you cannot put the blame. That, just like Isabella told us, you can't put the blame on your husband and say, it's my husband. There's no ignorance. There's no ignorance. You can't tell God to say, I'm sorry.